All right, well, what's up, everybody? I'm Tommy Colonin. I am really from Philly, and I really am 50. I'm from Crossover Church in Tampa, Florida, and we do this thing called Flavor Fest. It's an urban leadership training initiative that we started in the year 2000, and we have helped plant dozens of churches and revitalize hundreds of churches in the urban context. Now, in the urban ministry space, like the big pain point is that there's not enough relevant resources, not enough urban ministry, innovative church models to follow. And so when I first stepped into this space 25 years ago, like I had to start from scratch. There was no blueprint. But see, I'm entrepreneurial, so I didn't complain. There was no lane, so I created it. And being that I'm from Philly, I love hip hop and I love basketball. And so we used music and we used sports as a way to reach unchurched urban youth. And within a few years, we had hundreds of unchurched teenagers attending our church. And so how many of y'all know there ain't much money in urban ministry? You gotta have a side hustle. So the apostle Paul, uh, he made tents. Me, I rapped. And so seriously, I created several indie albums and ended up getting signed to a national record label. Uh, y'all remember when you had to go to the stores to buy music? That was my stuff. So because of that, our, our youth ministry and church soon had national attention, and people were coming from all over the world to visit us and see what we were doing, and I soon discovered, like, man, there's hundreds of other people like us that have a passion to reach urban culture, and they're looking for new ideas, they're looking for resources, they're looking for training. And so I was in New York City at a hip-hop concert, and this guy came up to me, his name was Ephraim Alicia, a.k.a. Brother E. He knew my music, so he knew about my church, and he started picking my brain and asking me like a million questions because he wanted to start a church like ours. Suddenly, I realized like we were the experts. Now, I didn't feel like an expert. My team didn't, but we felt a responsibility that, man, we got to teach people what we're doing and what we're learning and the strategies that are working. So that's what birthed Flavor Fest over 20 years ago. And Brother E., he was at the very first one. A couple years later, he came and brought a team. And a few years later after that, they were inspired to plant Elements Church in the South Bronx. When we did our very first online uh, cohort before Zoom was even popular and started training uh, pastors, he was on there. And we trained them how to create healthy systems in the urban context. Now, unfortunately, earlier this year, Brother E passed away suddenly. But while he passed, he was doing what he loved to do. He was coaching another urban pastor on Zoom. And so his legacy lives on through his church and all the people he coached, and I miss him like crazy. But one of my favorite stories is about a guy named Jerome Verling. He came up to me in our church lobby. He was visiting after a service from Michigan, and he handed me a CD. Now listen, as a national artist back in those days, people passed me CDs and demos all the time because they thought I was going to be the hookup to get him a record deal. Right? And so let me tell you something. I, I got a lot of bad CDs. Uh, a lot of them looked bad, not just sounded bad, but I got a lot of silver discs with like some Sharpie written on it. But Jerome's CD, man, it had great packaging, great artwork. It had gold foil on it. So it caught my attention. I'm like, I got to check this out. I listened to it. It was great. On top of that, I got to admit, I was intrigued because his real name was Jerome and he was a white guy. He had so. Um, so our next cohort that we did online, he joined it. A couple years later, him and his family actually moved to Tampa, Florida to do their residency with us at Crossover Church. And a few years after that, they planted City Life Church in the inner city of Lansing, Michigan, and they have been crushing it. Today they do uh, multiple services in a school. They're self-sustainable. I spoke to them yesterday. They just had a big serve week this past week. Uh, the, all these community service projects that 800 people at church and 65 people came to Jesus on Sunday. Come on, somebody make some noise in the building. Yeah. So Flavor Fest is still around 23 years later, like, and we've trained over 5,000 urban church leaders and artists. And so what, what's our secret sauce to our longevity? It's this, y'all. We keep innovating in the local church. So we are current practitioners in the city in a multi-ethnic, multi-generational, multi-class church full of a bunch of creatives. And our church is super diverse and looks like the city. And we can authentically be us. So during the pandemic, I, I, I can like say, thank God we, we didn't survive. We thrived because we were on the pulse of what was happening. We leveraged technology. But we know a lot of the churches that we serve, that wasn't their case. And they struggled. 
And so uh, we know everybody couldn't come to Tampa to our conference in, in, with all the inflation. And so we decided in 2023 to take it to them. And so we took Flavor Fest on the road. We went to New York City, Los Angeles, Atlanta, Houston. We touched over 800 leaders this year so far. We still have our one in Tampa coming up. But here's the thing, y'all. As America becomes more urban and more brown, the church has to have more strategies of how we're going to raise up urban churches, how we're going to revitalize churches that are dying in the city and resource those leaders. And so now we have the blueprint. We did it last year. We're going to do it in an even bigger way in 2024. And so we're asking you guys to partner with us. We're excited because we have this uh, Christian hip-hop artist named KB. Anybody know KB? He's partnering with us next year. He's going to be going to every city. He's going to be speaking. He's going to be doing music. He has a best-selling book now. Uh, he's been a friend of mine. I've been mentoring him for years. So we're super excited about what God is going to do in 2024 as we continue to raise up more urban leaders. And so we ask for your prayers. We ask for your support. And I just want to close out and leave you with these little words to, to think about. So. People look at my church now and can think I easily made it, but they don't know the story behind the glory because, man, we waited. It was a struggle, and sometimes it still is today because urban ministry can grind you up like pure ray. But there's been miracles along with blood, sweat, and tears. I've been grinding in Tampa for over 20 years, but it's worth it. Training leaders and planting urban churches is like my praise and worship. When you read the scriptures in context, you soon learn that rebuilding is a process. Nehemiah rebuilt in just days, but the rest took years, so we stayed. So we stay in the battle. We stay in the struggle. We stay in the trenches. We rebuild the rubble. We stay through the fight. We stay through the drought. We know there's no free passes. We won't tap out. Bless you guys.